Hey guys, this is Tom from Box. Thank you for tuning in to this damage report for April 2024. April 15th or it's April 22nd, depending on the region that you're in. I'm going to take a sip of this coffee first because I just handled the US Challenger Cup and I immediately went straight to grind another thing. And then in a couple of hours, it's going to be head judging time for the remote regional. So here we go. So today in this damage report, as per usual, we're going to be going over the list itself and then we're going to look at the winners, losers, the damage report of the things that were seriously affected or rather the one deck that was seriously affected. But there's a lot of collateral damage along the way and we kind of get to see the big picture. So that's what we're going to be talking about here today. And don't forget, we're always going to include the top tier potential of upcoming decks moving into the new format. Now, I'm not going to go as far as, say, the set after uh, Legacy of Destruction. We're going to keep it before Infinite Forbidden, just so that we have a you know a clear picture, because typically a new balance is going to come out anyway. So make sure you guys hit that like button, hit subscribe, ding the notification bell, and let's get to it. Starting off with the ban list itself. Okay, so this particular report is a lot smaller, and you can see why. Because only five cards went down, and every other card on this list was a strictly just returning back in to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Maybe the power cap is so far to the point that these cards that previously were menaces are now back into the game. But looking at the banned cards, we have Link Karibo, Baron Fleur, Borderload Savage, and Summon Limit. I know exactly one deck that plays all of these in one package, and that's going to be Pure Snake Eye. They have to play the Synchro package, they get the Witch plus the Ash, these are the cards that we're likely going to see. And as a side deck option, Summon Limit. Now, I predicted the Link Karibo and the Summon Limit portion of this. I never expected the Baron or the Borderload Savage. And of course, the Unicorn. I have three cards, but it was probably my most inaccurate balance prediction to date. And I still hit a couple of cards because those are just so easy to predict for the most part. But in any case here, those are the cards that went down to zero, so Pure Snake Eye is part of this report. Looking into the cards that went to one, we have Arc Nemesis Protos, Magic Spectre Unicorn, Tidal, Colossus is back as well, which is huge. Chicken Game, I can't talk to you guys about Chicken Game just yet, but you'll see in the very new future, it's probably going to be seeing a lot more play. Maybe in a deck like Ashen, who knows? That's where I'm going to leave it there. And then we have another Floodgate. Anti-Spell Fergans going down to one. In other words, we're not allowing people to secure games, but not allowing the opponent to play. That's what the Summon Limit looks like. That's what the Anti-Spell looks like. Arc Nemesis Protoss kind of just counters the, the statement I just made. Like, oh, you're just not locking people out of play. Arc Nemesis Protoss locks people out of playing. And we have Thunder Dragon Colossus. And there's also Nemesis cards that are Thunder. You can search them. There's just a lot of synergy here that we might see a bit of a chaotic deck that's going to happen thanks to our, ne our Nemesis Protoss. Uh, as for the Magic Spectre Unicorn, I'm not sure if that's going to really do anything considering that Magic Spectre always had to tribute summon out this card. So are we going to see a different Pendulum deck being able to abuse this particular card? We'll see in the near future. Title is here. Maybe Marincess is going to be able to play this card. Or is it going to be Mermail? I'm not too sure if Mermail's going to be able to kind of pick up the slack. I mean, there's a lot of good cards in Mermail, such as Atlantean Dragoons. There may be an option here. The Foolish Burial Effect and the ability to summon itself may be important. Thunder Dragon Colossus. This is a high impact card. In my prediction on the return of this card for right now, I would say it's going to be splash in probably some of the more unexpected ways. And that's probably where we're going to leave it. We already talked about Chicken Game. We're going to move on from that. Uh, Armageddon Knight to two. Okay, that's fine. Delicious uh, memory. That's a really good plus for Pearly. And the card's going to three. I don't know a single format where Malicious being at three was ever a good thing because that just means that other decks are going to be splashing Malicious. And we have two Armageddon Knight as well. Is that a serious choke point for people to get hit by an Ash Blossom? Potentially. And there's also Orcus Harp Horror, there's Speed or Terror Top, and of course Engage is also back at 3. It feels like we're just basically shoving Toss format back down our throats here because we got the Thunder Dragon, we have the Orcus, we have the Sky Striker, so we're merging Modern with Toss and maybe that's enough because a lot of these Toss decks, Sky Striker has Linkage, we have Salamangre that has Raging Phoenix, also playing Fire Package. So the only one that's seriously weakened would be Thunder Dragon. Now, there's more to talk about in terms of Baron de Fleur and Borload Savage, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's take a look at some more winners. 
Winners across the board, Thunder Dragon, Orcus, Sky Striker. Basically, the toss decks are going to be really, really popular, at least for the first little bit, seeing if they can keep up with modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Pearly is going to be really happy having additional consistency added to the deck and Delicious Memory being at two. That's going to be a major plus. Nibiru is a very big winner here because the losers being Baron de Fleur and Borload Savage, two of the biggest negators that have the easiest access to negate Nibiru along the way, that's turned off making Nibiru a lot stronger, especially on the late game boards where it can wipe off the board. So they can let you commit harder since you can't build that Omni negate anymore. And if you're going to be going into Appaloosa, well, that likely... Appaloosa is a lot more readable when it comes to those cases and requires you to, to commit more monsters before that becomes a problem. Appaloosa on 5th is now going to be a thing if you want to stop something like this, or maybe you can play Dinosaurs. Looking into this even further, we also have Garunix Fire King, Snake Eye Fire King. That card, or that, that deck is completely untouched. Branded is completely untouched. Cash Tears untouched. Feather Storms untouched. <laughs> D shifters untouched voiceless voice probably wasn't getting a touch anyway but also untouched and we also have a new lockout card arc nemesis protos that card is searchable in many ways you can search it with nemesis flag you can search it with i believe a small world in terms of the key losers of the format just literally the cards that got banned however link kariba has a lot more implication and that's where i want to talk about in report number two in the collateral damage section a lot of things did hurt and if you think you can just pivot into paulo's build you you better think again because you are missing a few key components and it's a lot more painful than it looks but you know snake eye pure is probably the one that took the biggest hit Okay, so we're going to dwell on pure snake eyes for a little bit. In terms of deck losses, they lost the Link Karibo, which is probably one of the most significant cards they lost. They lost the Borlode Savage, the Baron de Fleur, those which would have required you to have the Witch line to play or somehow access the Jet Synchron and a level 7. So those are the parts that we're kind of missing here. Technically, you can also use Flamberge plus a level 1 and the Jet Synchron, also an option. Formula Synchron's what are you doing with a formula synchron there is an argument that you could be playing multiple formula synchrons as to use as a draw engine to draw additional cards but is that a bit of a waste maybe not the reason why i say that is because it's very difficult to go into deco talker heat soul in a more pure build Sorry, without link karibo in particular because what is your alternative cybers monster that you can use it's going to be ip mascarena are you committing that many cards into making that Deco Talker Heatzel? You guys let me know down in the comment section, is it actually worth it? That means making a Deco Talker Heatzel is no longer just some easy play that you can make. You're actually committing hard monsters and you're not recovering monsters and using free monsters such as Link Rebo coming back from the graveyard to kind of facilitate the cyber uh, material recipe. So that is something that you have to keep in mind now. So that makes Deco Talker Heatzel more exclusive to cyber stacks rather than to the general public so deck repairs well luckily we can be lazy we can go into fire king snake eye because that deck was not touched you still have arvada as a negate you still have the combo lines that can play around nibiru so i guess that may be one of the best options you can also alternatively play rescue ace with the sinful spoil package you can play snake eyes stuff in there mainly just poplar to be honest but if you want to repair the deck link rebo's replacement being relinquish anima there are some serious things that Relinquish Anima cannot do. It is an offensive card, not a defensive one compared to Link Rebo. So you can also play Amble Whale. You can add additional copies of Promethean Princess. You can add Salamangra Silent Wolf back into your extra deck just so that you can kind of fill those slots or you can double up on other names like SP Little Knight. In terms of combo losses and gains, so you lost any combo that le led into any of the Synchro plays. Obviously, the Synchro lines are completely gone, which means your protection against board wipes is a lot worse now like normally you could have just straight up just negated it you know the evenly matches the lightning storms the regeki but like it's definitely harder for sure and they trade better against you to the point that maybe you have to reform your combos a little bit seriously though you still have the baseline combo of going into appaloosa with the ip masquerade in the bag but without the link karibo there are many times where most people would threaten the Appaloosa and they would just try to go to battle phase. You would apply most of your effects, but then at the end of the day, Link Karibo is the thing that's keeping your Appaloosa alive and that's not going to be available. Your Appaloosa is now susceptible for being destroyed by battle and that's going to be very difficult. 
And also we're gonna lose the additional body that the Link Karibo left behind thanks to the Promethean Princess chain. We're chain link one Promethean Princess, chain link two. Whatever the Promethean Princess targeted that is a level one fire, you're gonna use Link Karibo to tribute that off to summon the Link Karibo back. And then you just destroy your opponent's monster and now you gain additional monsters just for your own play. That's also going to be removed. Other than that, you still have all the same offensive capability, but in terms of your sustainability, that is severely, severely shot. And I think it's just not the same. Yeah, they can still do the same offensive stuff for the most part, but the defense play is kind of gone. This is kind of becoming more glass cannony until the combos get rearranged, maybe new lines are formed, or maybe the new cards are released, kind of update the deck. And that's kind of where I think maybe Pure Snake I may have a chance. But in terms of like, if you just want to keep on playing the deck at top tier, play the Fire King variant. It's still very strong. It never played the, uh, the extra deck when it comes to the synchro packages. Yeah, it's just still very strong. Rescue Ways is available. I mean, you can wait for Infernoids to continue playing. Synchro Lines are kind of rendered unplayable right now. Heat Soul Lines are a little bit more difficult. And I still think this deck is still very, very strong, regardless of its massive hit. So part two of the report, we have the collateral damage. We already spoke a lot about it in the first part regarding Snake Eye, considering these were all Snake Eye related hits. So we have Baron the Flare, Borload Savage, and the Link Rebo. So what are other decks that were impacted by this? Manadium, Sword Soul, Rescue Ace, Speedroid, Cash Tira, anything that wants to start with a level 10 to protect themselves from hand traps, like big hand traps like Nibiru, they are going to have to Find other ways of means of protection. Luckily, ABC doesn't really matter for me because I did use the Baron before, but now I can just use Regulus as my main option, or I can just use Crystal Wings, uh, Crystal Wing Dragon as my option, Crystal Wing Synchro. So, yay, ABCs. Uh, for Nibiru, yeah, the end board wipes pretty hard, or even the later board wipes, like Spell Trap board wipes, those are gonna be very effective. Monster based board wipes are not gonna be as clean because Appaloosa likely is gonna be one of the more optimum finish. But if you're, people are gonna be starting off with uh, Appaloosa, that also means mind control, snatch deal, change of heart. These are all going to be highly effective against those boards because it's a lot less protected unless they were playing counter traps like Solemn Strikes and stuff like that. Borlo Savage kind of under the same gun here where there is rockets are affected mainly because that was one of the go-to, but there's not exactly a lot of uh, say Link slash Synchro decks that can manipulate tuners uh, so effectively to my knowledge so it's mainly just rockets rescue ace snake eye same thing it just takes away the formula sync prime play link karibo other things that were affected fire kings for the ponix dinosaurs for the arcosaur but it doesn't really matter when it comes to link karibo as most people have already considered hey we're just gonna replace it with link anima anyway but we're link anima and link karibo they kind of facilitate different things link karibo provided you with the more defensive options and your level one monsters were super safe overall it was very hard to hit them with an Imperm Veil or anything that targeted even a Ghost Mourner because Link or Evil can tribute them away during that chain link. And that's something that Relinquish Anima does not offer. And that is actually a very big difference uh, when it comes to, I mean, the dark plays are still there. Anything that's offensive is okay, but all the defensive offerings of Link Reveal is completely gone. So that's it. Now for report number three, we have Thunder Dragons. There's a lot more to think about when it comes to Thunder Dragons, even though it's just one card coming back, it, just changes so much in terms of deck damage nothing this is a clear win for thunder dragons it's toss format again and deck repairs they will exist in the format they, there's going to be thunder dragon decks people are going to splash in nemesis cards just so that they can drop thunder dragon colossus because it's the easy way out especially when the deck already has a banishing base gimmick where oh okay i'll just put the card back in someone you know nemesis corridor through its effect it activated from hand so thunder dragon can be tribute summon boom and it also makes Cross Sheep that much better because now you have access to a monster that's automatically a fusion monster. Yeah, this is crazy. So that also adds into the mix another Shifter deck if they play pure Thunder Dragon here because Thunder Dragon back in the day, Shifter was added into their deck and uh, they were able to control Tempo. That's when like Tempo of the Thunder Dragons was like very, very important. Thunder Dragon and Fusion can cycle your Colossus back in, so outing one Colossus isn't the end of the Colossus. And what are some of the decks that may seem uh, to be resurfaced? Danger Thunder Dragon. Don't forget, Danger Package are like completely like unblocked right now, I believe. And there's Danger Dragon Link. Uh, sorry, not Danger Dragon Link. Uh, Thunder Dragon Link. Dino Thunder is also another very scary one that 
I don't know why I want to be the, on the other end of because dinosaurs are still very strong. Sure, you only have one misc. Oh, but this is one deck that could put Quatlas next to a Thunder Dragon uh, Colossus, which means the Imperm is not going to be able to get you your searches back. And then there's Dark World Thunder, another option. This is you can just basically take whatever that you've seen in Thunder Dragon form in Master Duel and kind of translate it over back into the TCG. So. There's some neat things there. Shifter Thunder, Bestial Thunder is another thing because you can banish some of those cards out of the graveyard and uh, you get yourself some sixes. There's just so many Thunder Dragon hybrids that you can probably see in the near future. And if it synergizes with a tier one deck, you're gonna have basically automatic draw and lock bird activated onto the field before you even get to play. And final remarks, what are some of the cards that Thunder Dragon Colossus actually hits? Well, Wanted for one, Bonfire, Snake Eye, Ash, Legendary, Fire King, Ponyx, Ariana, Fluandere, Summons. Yeah, they're all super rough. So you either need a Droplet or an Imperm opening unless they play it with like a negation paired with it. And that makes it very difficult to play. And so we're gonna see some of those classic boards come back, even if it's just one Thunder Dragon Colossus. That's all really that they need anyway. And time for the tier potential list. I know some of you guys just skip straight to here just to check and validate whether or not your deck is still good. So here's my kind of rundown here. So we have top tier potential, we have high tier potential and hidden potential. And the same rule goes, this is not where they place right now, but how they have expectations to perform in the near future based off of my opinion, based off of whatever I've already seen, based off of what the ban list has done to some of these decks. So it's their ability to perform, not necessarily where they are, because you need tournament data to actually find out where they are. But this is in terms of, you know, where they would stand in terms of expected performance. So Fire King Snake Eye, definitely in the top because they were untouched uh, for the most part. They did lose Link Karibo, which did hurt, uh, but that means they're gonna compensate with the Fire King package. Branded Fusion, look, we're still going to be eating gimmick puppet lock in this day and age, so just, Consider that as you will, as they are completely untouched as and unfazed as well. Fluanderees, another shifter deck still here. I mean, these are the, you know, the go-to, the usual suspects, as you will. And then there's Voiceless Voice. They're going to be getting additional cards to play anyway. Sinful Spoil Rescue Ace is still in the mix. Adding into that mix, we have Tenpai Dragons. They are very scary, very strong. A field spell deck. They have a miscellaneous field spell deck, so... It's gonna be hard. Thunder Dragon variants, and there's even more on the next page. You're gonna have to find out whether or not the deck you believe in could be in there as well. And for high tier potential, we have Pure Snake Eye. I am not gonna give up on this deck just yet. Like, they got hit for a few cards, but don't forget there are more cards coming out. We have Snake Eye Dia Bell Star. Uh, maybe we'll see people actually play the card. And maybe people will switch to Dramatic Chase because you can search out Snake Eye's Dia Bell Star. And if you search that out, you can put it into the back row. You can use that to actually cycle some of your cards in your back row. There are options, and I feel like maybe we haven't explored everything available for Snake Eye as the deck evolves in this ban list. This Horus Stun, that's a scary deck. I mean, that's always been high tier potential. Do you have the out? Can you out the, the vanity stuff? Pretty nasty. Or do you have the out against the um, Light and Darkness Dragon? Tier limit variants, including the Horus variants. I mean, tier limit is always going to be very, very strong, especially when they go first. U Bell is going to be added to the mix. I don't think they're going to have night like the Phantom of U Bell just yet, so I'm not going to put them at top tier potential. I mean, I'm not even including Fiend Smith in here because it's not going to be relevant. Okay? Yeah, where does Fiend Smith fit in here? It doesn't fit in here at all because a new ban list will probably be out by then. Illusion Chimera is something that I'm experimenting with, and I've been having very good success. And even against the current pure snake eye and now that that's gone i've moved it up from hidden to uh high tier potential i'm going to be experimenting with that deck for sure pearly got an additional card so and pearly has already been performing very well and i've been kind of following uh ding kang fam so you know <laughs> shout outs to you buddy uh <laughs> i've seen you just just crush it from regional to regional to regional, I wouldn't call it YCSs because there are no YCSs in Europe. And then the Cash Tier Stun, still a deck. It's a shifter deck, okay? Hidden potential wise, Manadium is still there. I mean, lots of Manadium plays don't even end on Baron de Fleur, but the nib check is not there anymore, so that is gonna be a bit more painful. Grandpa Stun, that's going to be shoutouts to Johnny and Michael. 
Uh, of course, that is uh, the grandpa stun where they just use uh, the decisive battle of Golgonda to keep the uh, no special summoning clause live. Sky Striker is back, so we're going to put a shout out here for them. And uh, Drytron. I am going to put Drytron in a Rogue Wednesday. It will be a little bit of a disaster for some of you guys trying to play at your locals. Some of you will quit the game. I'm sorry. I am going to introduce a variant that is very, very degenerate, but it's also a counter to Tenpai Dragon. But I think making someone sit through Yu-Gi-Oh! literally not being able to play a single card for three turns was more than enough to make them really angry and sell their deck back to the store, switching to a different card game like One Piece. Yeah, that's very fun. Even though I would say it's not like the best deck ever, but sitting through it almost felt offensive. I'll show you guys that in, in, in like a Rogue Wednesday coming up, all right? Uh, and then we have Salamangre. Salamangre recently topped our own Vancouver Regional with an undefeated record going third of all things. But uh, there are different end boards you can try out with uh, Salamangre. So, and I do believe they are getting more cards in the upcoming set. So there you have it. Uh, then there's also Marine Cess. There's also Orcus. Marine Cess getting just back the title. Maybe it's gonna make a little bit of a difference. I, I'm seeing. I'm trying to find decks that are gaining impact from this deck list and adding uh, from not this deck list, but this ban list and adding them onto this list. Orcus gets three hard power. They get a lot more consistency and not just relying on the one. I want to see what Phil builds on this because he was always an Orcus fan, and uh, you always gotta take the people that are super passionate about their build and you know let them take it further and let them educate you on it and so i kind of want to see where this one is going to go now i got one more page don't worry maybe your list is still there and we have in top tier potential i'm putting centurion up there this is a bit of a risky kind of take on this and not probably not, not the hottest take for sure centurion i would also put dinosaurs in here uh I'm not sure if it's top tier potential, probably like high tier, but Centurion, the reason why I kind of shoved it up there for now is I've seen some of the cards, I've seen what they can do, and there's still Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend, King Calamity. Uh, I think we're still going to get locked, and it's going to get worse because with the new with the new mo monsters, like uh, Archileo or whatever his name is, like, the Bestials aren't a weakness. They've never really been weak to Nibiru anyway. So the hand trap line is not exactly in their favor. There are certain things lining up that made them easier to play, easier to lock you out, and maybe it's going to be a bit of a menace to whatever tournament that you're going to be playing in the near future. So I'm going to include them in top tier potential for now. Uh, it is a bit of a risk gamble. It might not pay off, but that's the take I'm putting in for now. I might not include your deck right now. If you guys don't see your deck, leave it down in the comment section below if you think it belongs there. Raid Raptor, I've seen this deck in action. It is very, very dangerous, and it's very easy to lose to this particular deck. Yes, they do have significant weaknesses. We get it. Uh, but the deck is still very strong, and I've seen people play around those weaknesses uh, just by having Raiders Wing. Raiders Wing just getting rid of the ability to target that monster becomes a very, very big problem. Labyrinth and all of its variants are still... Pretty solid. Raika is another deck coming in. And TCG might have a higher potential than OCG for sure. Being able to lock people out of hand effects is pretty solid. Ogdoidic Raika. There's many different variants of Raika. I think some people are going to definitely give it a try because if they like tri brigades and they like to experiment, this is probably one of those things. It's like how Bird Up became a thing. Maybe we'll have a TCG variant. It's like people tried Unchained in TCG and kind of exploded Unchained to the point that it needed to be hit on the ban list. However, is Raika going to kind of fall under the same blade? I'm not too sure, but it's going to be up to the community to kind of drive that forward. Dark World is Dark World. It's always the die roll dice, or die roll dice, die roll deck that people struggle to play against. Oh, you lose the die roll, still by, uh, uh, resolve twice? Yeah, the game is more or less over. Dragon Link is still sticking around, especially when they can probably mix in some of those Thunder Dragon cards. It's really, really easy. I mean, you just turn it back into a Chaos deck. Like, Chaos Thunder Dragon was, like, ridiculously strong. Dino Thunder was ridiculously strong. It's just, they're still around. Sure, they lost, 
like, what was it? They lost Borlo Savage, but I don't think that's going to be the end all of this deck since I think they didn't need it. They have also Borl, uh, End Dragon if they want to finish you off too, and they still can establish decent amounts of negates. Runic Variants, still very strong. As long as uh, Joshua Schmitz keeps on playing it, someone's going to find a way to break it, and it's likely going to be him. Uh, ABC Synchros on Hidden Potential. This is just for me to kind of play something how I believe in my deck. I mean, it plays like Snake Eye, but has basically none of the strength that Snake Eye offers in terms of the Field Spell or Promethean Princess. If the deck had something like a Promethean Princess or something that summoned something out of the deck, uh, then yeah, it would have been like ridiculously strong because literally the deck does more or less the same stuff. Mermail, I'm just going to put a quick, you know, honorable mention into Hidden Potential. Will the one title make that big of a difference? It's literally just a foolish burial. Do you have additional plays? Is that good enough? I personally don't think it is, but you can still end on Toad Boards, right? Right? Magic Spectre, I still think New Orthos is a significant weakness. Hero's got three Malicious. I'm not sure if that's going to make any difference, to be honest, because it was fine back then. You had Denier already that kind of did the same thing. You might draw into multiple Malicious and maybe Brick Harder, but I think Malicious is likely going to be for a different deck rather than Heroes. Anytime Malicious is a three, it's never just four heroes anymore it's like oh this other deck is now able to play beatrice now because oh malicious is at three and I, I i see i really see that happening i just really do see that happening and then there's other decks if i missed it leave it down in the comment section i would love to hear your thoughts but this is the damage report for now i mean this is a wild format because a lot of the best decks they were not touched and so they lowered the ceiling of the deck that was considered the best also collaterally hit a lot of different cards away we still have the gimmick puppet lock that's still here shifters are around because the the bird decks are still able to go thrust right into a feather storm cash tier is still here that engine's still alive it is a very very big mix i need to know what your thoughts on the on this ban list are Leave it down in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching. But I think give it a week or two and then things will settle out. And we're going to see a lot of beetle people getting creative and really pushing things forward. Now, I got a thing to judge in a couple of hours. So I'm going to go to sleep now. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to catch up on the market watch coming up tomorrow with Nishi. Nishi is going to push that forward. He's going to wait for things to settle usually because I hog the spotlight here because we can only really upload like one video before YouTube kind of suppresses stuff uh, <laughs> for mass uploading. Uh, but he's going to see how things settle for the most part. And, uh, you know, so you don't have to kind of jump in on like a crazy bio. Like things tank quite quickly the day after. Anyways, that's all I got for this one. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, ding that notification bell, and I will see you all in the next one.